Hi, it's Wesley with 22 Zines, and I'm going to be completely honest for a second. I have been getting in my own head a lot lately about making videos, and specifically about making tarot videos. Um, originally, the reason that I wanted to make this channel, or make a YouTube channel at all, or like the thing that finally kickstarted me into actually doing it, was because I was really enamored with all of these tarot tags that I saw where people were showing off different decks that would fit into different categories because that appeals to like my most base, you know, instinct, I guess, <laughs> or like my base tendency of liking to organize little things into categories. Like that's one of my favorite things to do genuinely is just to like take down all of my books and rearrange them and put them back up and I really love arranging little um, displays of all of my little trinkets and, you know, I love arranging art. I've got like a shit ton of magnets on my fridge that I totally love and I occasionally will just like take them all down and then put them all up in a little different orientation. And so honestly, the tarot tags, I think the reason that they appeal to me in the first place is because I really love the idea of looking at all of the decks that I have and being able to pick certain ones that fit something the best and to organize them into these little categories, not necessarily physically on the shelf or anything, but, you know, bringing them down and showing them off in video within these little categories. <laughs> and um, for some reason, I feel like I started to get nervous about the idea that um, I don't have a super big deck collection, and that doesn't bother me at all, and I don't feel like I need to compete with anybody, or that I need to hoard decks, or that I need to, you know, increase the size of my collection so that I can keep up with anything. I've never really felt that, and I don't feel that from anybody on YouTube. It's just purely, like, for whatever reason, I've had that little nagging, intrusive thought, basically, that says, no one's going to want to watch you do these videos because you don't have enough decks, and so you're going to be repeating decks really frequently if you do responses to these tags. Um, because when I have, I think I have right now 26 decks, I want to say, something like that. So it's a very decent sized collection like it's it's probably more decks than anybody would ever need in their life you know um but when you're doing tags that have like nine different uh categories for each one then even if i happened to have you know one perfect deck that you know fits that unique category and also I don't repeat any in other, um, you know, in other responses, then I, I only have enough decks to last me, like, three videos, um, without repeating some. So I've sort of had to, it, like, it took me a little while, I think, it took me a few weeks, I think, to really realize, first of all, that this is the thing that was bothering me, and not that it was some sense of procrastination or some sense of, like, you know, something else that was holding me back from making video responses to things. And also then to get over myself and to basically reaffirm my uh, values, I guess, and reaffirm my beliefs and just sort of re constantly remind myself, it's okay. Like, nobody cares if you repeat decks. That's just... That's just the nature of it. Like, I don't care when other tarot YouTubers repeat decks and things, and there's no reason why I shouldn't, and I'm not, you know, trying to make a business out of this. I'm not, you know, the purpose of my channel is not to highlight a whole bunch of different decks and to, um, or to provide news on tarot or to show off new releases, you know, and that's great that there are some people who do that, so that I don't have to, <laughs> that I can, that I can get the information without having to do it myself, you know? Um, 
so basically I've just kind of, I've had to, I've had to get over myself a little bit and I've had to remind myself like, just, just do what you want to do. And, you know, as Lisa said, I mean, Lisa has so many little bits of wisdom that I keep finding myself coming back to Lisa from support of tarot. Um, uh, <laughs> I, you know, has, has all these different little, whatever, these little bits of wisdom that I like to keep coming back to and that keep, cropping up. And so that bit of wisdom is that YouTube is supposed to be my playground and I'm supposed to be able, like the whole point of this is to, is to have fun with it. And, you know, in some ways I've also had to get over this tendency to chastise myself for being like, Wesley, you think you're some hot shit? You know, <laughs> <laughs> like nobody cares what I do on YouTube. Not not nobody, but you know, in a way, nobody really cares. Everybody carried on just fine when I didn't have a YouTube channel and it's like I don't know. I think I just have a very frequent tendency to make things bigger than they are and make problems a bigger deal than they are and all that sort of thing. So that very long introductory ramble was basically a way of me saying that I found a tarot tag that has inspired me to get the fuck over myself. And, uh, <laughs> and that is the hello again tag by, uh, who did it originally? Uh, Cassia at Tarot Map. And then I saw it through Tail Raven Tarot, who saw it through Peekaboo Rose, and of course that's how tarot tags work, because you, you get a nice, nice little community, and everybody gets to see it from somebody, and then participate. So, I really like this tag. It's a nice, cute, little, three-prompt uh, video response tag, whatever you want to call it. Um, and so this is going to be my, my getting back into it, and my reassurance that <laughs> that everything's okay and that I can set aside some of this anxiety that I have and just play around and, um, you know, play with my decks, basically. So, the first question, the first prompt, I'm gonna be, like, looking off the side to my notes, the first prompt is, hello again, show us an old deck that you fell in love with and have started using again. And for that, I have the... Gorgon's Tarot. This is a little box that I made for it, although it's kind of crappy and I'm gonna try and make a new one. Um, one of the first boxes that I ever made for my decks, so um, yes, the Gorgon's Tarot, the circular one, I finally got around to edging mine in black, which I'm pretty happy about, and this is the miniature version that uh, does not come with the guidebook or anything, and I did that whole thing where I bought the full size and then bought the mini in addition so that I could have the guidebook and the mini, and now I'm just sending out little individual cards from the large version in my zine bundles, and, you know, I always look like having little postcards and little bits and bobs to throw into my <laughs> zine packages so that I don't have to print any stickers or anything like that. Uh... Yeah, so this is the that really cool round deck that's black and white, and, you know, the reason that I fit it with this tag here, let me do this this way, this is, this is the smart way to do it. Here we go. The, so the reason that this fits with this tag is because this is one of the first uh, decks that I got got that was, um, oh man, look at that. <laughs> so pretty. The, okay, this is one of the d first decks that I got, uh, beside, you know, when I first started getting into tarot, whatever the fuck that means, and, um, I like to give each of my decks a little nickname, and someday when I do a full collection video, I'll share all of them with you, but, um, this deck I nicknamed her twin sister, um, <laughs> just because I really, when I did my sort of introduction reading or, um, uh, what's it called? Like deck interview thing, then all of the, 
all of the responses, all of the cards that I pulled just really felt like it was sort of like a reflection of my own inner voice and my own inner thought. And, and it's, and so that's sort of why I call it twin sisters. I know that twins are not the same person. They're just like any other sibling, but you know, just the idea of like, it's my, um, you know, it's just so similar to me. I've just, since school has been starting for me, there have been a lot of really tricky moments where I've kind of been getting in my head too much and, and almost like seeing tarot and seeing playing with these new decks as an obligation where I feel like, oh, well, I have this new deck that I haven't played with that much. And so I should really use that one, you know, because otherwise, why did I even get it? And it's, you know, clearly this is a problem for me. Clearly I need to work on, you know, these crazy high standards that I set for myself. But anyway, so it's been really nice to return to this. This is definitely one that I am very glad that I know that I can return to and play with whenever I want to. Gorgon's Tarot or my twin sister. The next prompt is getting to know you better. Show us a deck that you have been working on already and is still around you. A deck you are getting to know better. And for that, I have the Animism Tarot by Joanna Chung. And sorry, I'm not going to be able to give the creator's name of all these decks just because I don't really have a good memory for that sort of thing, so I'm just reading it off the box. Anyway, this was one that I got from, um, directly from the creator, I believe. Um, and I really like this deck. I was honestly kind of hesitant just because I already have the Bohemian Animal Tarot that I love so much, and this sort of reminded me of it. And, um, eventually I ended up just pulling the plug on it, pulling the plug, pulling the trigger, <laughs> pulling the trigger on it. And I'm really glad that I did. So here it's just, it's very sweet. It also has, I think this is also pastel. Like the, the medium is oil pastel. I might be wrong, but you know, funny enough, it's actually the same medium as the Bohemian animal tarot. Um, but these are not anthropomorphic animals. These are just, um, whatever, regular, <laughs> regular animals. Um, and I just, I don't know. I just thought it was sweet and I just kind of wanted to try it. And I've been playing with it a lot lately because I really love the little guidebooks. They're little booklet style guidebooks, um, that just have such positive, uplifting messages. This is the Four of Pentacles. This is absolutely my favorite card in the deck. It is so, <laughs> it is so cute. And it's, it definitely captures that idea of wanting to hold on to what you have and sort of, you know, protect it. Like, <laughs> you know, having your, having these sort of natural defenses or natural defensiveness like the skunk, but still, you know, being a sweet animal. Like, I don't know. I just, I just really liked it. I could probably talk more about it if I got my words together. <laughs> but yeah, I've been getting to know this deck a lot recently. Um, and I just, I feel like it's very uplifting. And that's also nice for when I'm in those anxiety or, you know, depression moments where I just want to play with tarot and I don't want to have everything called out or whatever. I just get to play with this deck and and look at some nice animals and still have a meaningful reading from it. Okay, since I mentioned the guidebooks for them, then I went ahead and, to go and grab them and figured I might as well talk to them. Here they are. They're the, they come in two little zines. There's the uh, majors and the minors. And let's just, since I happened to land on it, here's the Ten of Pentacles. And I'm just going to read the text for it. And it's a pretty, you know, they're pretty succinct. Like, here's what the interior looks like. And so the, it's not a lot of text, but you don't need a lot of text. And just, it's, um, it's complete. You know, 
here's the Ten of Pentacles. Ten of Pen- Okay. <laughs> Ten of Pentacles, the zebra. She has journeyed far, and here life is thriving. She has found her place in this land. She knows that the world before her eyes is all hers, and she knows that she will share her experiences with those that she holds closest to her heart. The zebra, family, balance, encouragement, solidarity, freedom, peace. And obviously that has a lot of the traditional associations with the card and traditional meanings of the card, but just something about the way that it's written and the way that it's described feels um, like it offers a sense of clarity, you know, a, a sort of special sense of clarity with each particular card. So really love the little guidebooks for it, and it has been very useful in getting to know the deck better. And the nickname that I have for this deck, I call it Fawn, uh, because of this card especially, which came up in the interview reading, and also just because I think that the word Fawn and the name Fawn sort of um, captures that gentleness and that sweetness and that, um, you know, that sense of safety. Like, everything is okay here, you can let your guard down, and it's okay to be fragile like a little baby deer. So I called this deck Fawn. And the last prompt is, pleased to meet you, show us a new arrival or a deck you haven't had a chance to work with yet. So for that, I have the Noisy Museum Tarot, which is L.A. Green Witch is the name of the creator. And I got this as kind of like an impulse, and I think it was from Game Crafters or Make Playing Cards, whatever, I never remember. Um, so I got this deck because I have always loved fine art decks as a concept, but none of them totally grabbed me enough to make me want to actually buy it. The one deck that has been on and off of my wish list for forever is the Revival Art Tarot, and I actually, um, because in the guidebook or whatever that comes with it, I don't even know if it has a guidebook, but in whatever comes with it, it doesn't have a list of all of the of what the actual paintings are or the pieces of art are that they used as representations of the cards. Like, I was actually interested enough in it that I went ahead and made a list of all of the, um, all of the pieces of art that were used in each one, and that was a very tedious process that in many cases involved a reverse image search and a whole bunch of junk. Um, so if you happen to have the Revival Art Tarot and you want to take a look at that list, let me know. I will definitely share it. But, you know, I went and I put in a whole bunch of work into that and into the idea behind this deck, but I just never bought it. And I still don't totally know why. Um, I think it's just because deep down I know that I'm not really going to work with a fine art deck because I'm not going to be able to get a lot... I, I, Okay, I'm going to be able be able to get meaning from it, but I'm just not going to really want to get meaning from it because when I am looking at fine art, I'm not looking at it I don't want to look at it from an analytical perspective or from trying to get something out of it. Um it's just not really how I interact with fine art, and so it just didn't feel like it was going to fit within my um the way that I use tarot. But I still really love fine art, and I love, you know, art history, and I love art theory and all that, and, but, you know, it just never, never grabbed me. Until, until this deck, which basically is sort of like a collage-ish deck of different fine art pieces. This moon is my absolute favorite card in the deck, and I think I didn't even look at all of the cards. I haven't seen a walkthrough or anything of this deck. There might be one out there, but it's also, it's somewhat new, and it's also, you know, print-on-demand, so probably not a lot of people know about it. Um, it's so pretty, and so you can see that, you know, there's these different, um, like, these painted lines to represent the wands, and there's, you know, a cutout of, um, of a painting frickin' <laughs> sorry. And so they have, and they have statues, and they have a lot of fine art that's done in a very 
nice little collage way without being too busy. Um, and I just, I thought that, yeah, this would be the thing to, to, that would bridge the gap, I guess, between the fine art decks, um, you know, to make, to make me be able to actually use it. So I'm very happy to have this. And honestly, I just got it at a bad time when I, that, I got this sort of in the same haul as I did with Fawn and with a couple other decks. Um, cause I just, you know, was going on a deck buying spree. And so this one just, I haven't really had the time to work with it or, or it ha I just haven't really had the time to really put the energy into, um, using another new deck as of late. And I don't know, uh, <laughs> like I just haven't really had the chance to work with it that much or haven't been drawn to, but I'm, I'm looking forward to the day when I do finally get around to working with this. I mean, I literally, I haven't done an interview. I haven't done anything with it besides just take it out of the box and, you know, shuffle it a couple times. And, you know, I like picking out my favorite cards in the deck. And so I, I've picked out, you know, a couple of, a couple of my favorite cards. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> and so as such, it doesn't have a name yet. Uh, but someday I will get around to actually using this deck and giving it a name and playing with it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I hope that you enjoyed that. And I hope that as I start to do more tarot tags, you won't get too terribly bored if I happen to show off the same decks multiple times. Um, and I'm hoping to try and shift my uh, perspective away from using prompts as a way to show off a collection, instead as using prompts as lenses through which to see my current collection anew. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> Thanks for dropping by, and I'll see you soon. Bye.